in this video, we're going to look at a couple of theorems that uh, that kind of go along with this uh, the extremum that we had talked about before. Uh, one of them is is one that you'll see very very often. I mean, it's it's one of those ones that crops up a lot, and so it's called the extreme value theorem. Okay. And this is this is kind of a, a crazy theorem, at least as as far as it goes. It's very very simple to say, <laughs> not so simple to use. But um, uh, this is one of the first real theorems that you tend to encounter in calculus. That is called an existence theorem. Okay, and usually an existence theorem goes something like, uh, for example. Um, Let's let's read the extreme value theorem, but as an existence theorem. Okay, so it's, uh, your version is probably going to be similar to if f is continuous on a closed interval, interval a b, then f has both a minimum and maximum on the interval. Okay, so now let's read that perhaps in a slightly different way. Okay, let's read it this way: if f is continuous on a closed interval a b then there exists a point C that is part of that interval where F is a minimum or a maximum. Okay? And so there exists a point. Okay, so it's not even telling you how to do it. It's simply telling you that one is out there, go find it kind of thing. And so these things, these these theorems can be kind of tricky, uh, and I just wanted to point out that this doesn't say much of anything other than the fact that it's out there. It's like saying um, it would be like if you if you're back in the Greek times and you were looking at the planets and you said, "Oh, that's a planet," or or it looks like another star, but we know that it's a planet. Oh, I wish I could go there. We know it's there, but we have no idea on how to get there. Okay, we we can't even fathom that yet, and so that's kind of what this is saying. All right, so let's take a, uh, a look at uh, this a little bit more deeply. And one of the things about the existence theorems, and all theorems really, that you want to uh, keep in mind is that the conditions are absolutely critical. So I'm going I'm to do a couple examples here. Okay, I'm going to do a fairly, uh, a fairly uh, uh, classical example. Uh, in in the first here, I'm gonna I'm gonna call this A. And I'm gonna kind of come up and around and up and down, and then I'll come back up and yeah, we'll end it there at B. So here's the point B, F of B. Okay, and here's the point A F of A. Doesn't really matter what the function is. I mean, this is at least a one, two, three, four, at least a fifth fifth level function. So it's at least a x to the fifth, but um, or fifth degree polynomial, but it could be something different. I mean, you never know. But point being is, the extreme value theorem says if f is continuous and it is by inspection continuous on the closed interval a, b, a and b are included as endpoints, then f has both a minimum and a maximum on the interval. Yes, yes, it does. Okay, and so remember when we were talking about mins and maxes, and we were talking about the definition of extrema that we said these were absolutes, okay? So we're going to look in within the interval itself. We're going to find that highest point, and oh, there's one right there, that highest point there, and oh, here's the low point here, okay? And so we have uh, an absolute max and an absolute min. Ah, that's fairly simple. Now, how do you find them? Oh, you just look at it, duh. Well, we're going to have to kind of talk about that just a little bit, and that kind of comes into play in the next uh, uh, in the next theorem. But keep in mind that if you look, these are at the top of hills, and we kind of talked about where critical numbers lie in the in the definitions. And, eh, they might be looking at some kind of derivative. All right. So now the second example, not so easy, and this is one that I struggle with, and and. But this is the only way that I can really see it. Okay, just assume that I can draw a straight line. <laughs> whoa, whoa, ah, 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 ah. We don't want that to continue on forever. It has to be closed, and infinites are not closed. They are open. 
silly boy. Okay, so now we've closed them off. So now we have, for example, um, say y equals 3, and we're going from negative 5 to 7, inclusive. All right, well, great. Extreme value theorem. If f is continuous, yep, this is a polynomial, and all polynomials are continuous, so yes, f is continuous. On a closed interval, a, b, yes, we defined our interval as to be closed from negative 5 to 7. Then f has both a minimum and a maximum on the interval. Uh-huh. And exactly where is that? And so I had to think about this. I, I, I really had to think hard. And then I went back to the definition of extremum. Okay, and, and, and in that definition, it says... Uh, if f is defined on an interval i containing c. Okay, so understand that we have a point c in, in our interval. i is the interval. In this case, i is the interval negative 5, 7 inclusive. Uh, then f of c is a minimum of f on i if that value is less than or, or equal to all other values. It is a maximum if that value is greater than or equal to all other values. The equal to is the key. Okay, so not only is every single point on this interval a minimum, but every single point on this interval is a maximum, and therefore it satisfies this extreme value theorem. The extreme value theorem says it must be there. It never says what it is. So you actually have to go back and use the definition of extrema to kind of play into the extreme value theorem. And it's the equals that hits it. So this is all points, all points, minimum and maximum. Okay, that's the only way that I could see that it possibly makes sense. So this is an oddity right here. I mean, this, this thing is just weird because you, you look at it and all the examples that your books are going to give you are probably going to be fairly simple examples. They're, they're going to be nice curvy things like you're, oh yeah, duh, I see it right there. But then they don't ask those really like weird questions like, well, what if it's just a straight line? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> then what? Now you got to figure that one out for yourself. So I thought I'd throw that in there because it's a question that bugged me when I was first learning this. Okay, moving on. We have uh, another theorem here. This one doesn't get a cool name, sorry. And so we're simply going to call it the relative extrema imply critical numbers theorem yeah very very catchy very very chic so if f has a relative minimum or relative maximum at c then c is a critical number of f and so if we go back to our critical numbers remember a critical number is a point within an interval at which either the derivative of f at c is zero or the derivative of f at c does not exist meaning it's non-differentiable at C. Okay, so let's take a couple examples here. All right, so now we have our uh, our classic example here, and we have a nice little... Now, keep in mind, uh, F does not necessarily have to have uh, uh, an interval that we that is specifically defined. How about that? Because it just says a relative minimum or maximum. Oh, no, I lied. It has to have an open interval. Relative minimum or maximum has to have an open interval. See what they do. See what math does. It just kind of throws the stuff out there and it assumes you know everything. And so sometimes you have to go back and look at it and be like, eh, I don't see it. Okay, so if, if it has a relative minimum or maximum, this condition, the relative min or max, is what causes us to have an open interval. Open interval. Okay, a classic open interval, by the way, is just infinities, negative and positive infinity. And so that's that's kind of easy. Um, but I, sorry, I, th I think that's a little bit trippy, and, and we're not going to do that right at this moment. We're going to kind of look at something a little bit more solid. And so we look at it and we say, okay, well, there's, um, if it has a relative min or max, so here's a relative maximum, it's relative 
because if I define an interval, say, from here to here, then that is going to be a relative maximum. Okay, so this is a relative max. This is a relative minimum. If I go from, say, here to here, this is a relative minimum. So don't be afraid to lock these guys up in a in some kind of a uh, a sub interval, if you will. Okay. So what we can do now is we can say, okay, well at these two points, then we must have critical points, and a critical point is simply where the derivative is zero or where it's not differentiable. We know that this function is continuous because I just kind of told you that, uh, but by inspection we can see that the function is continuous throughout our main interval here. Okay, and that uh, uh, that by uh, further by inspection we can see that the derivative changes signs. The slope changes from positive to negative, and therefore must pass through zero as it does so. Therefore, we have a relative minimum and a relative maximum. Notice that we didn't need the extreme value theorem uh, to tell us that there's a minimum and maximum. It's not a closed interval. Okay, we did not define it as such, and so these are not absolutes. Keep that in mind. Okay, so that pretty much closes off the uh, the discussion on critical numbers and relative extrema, as well as the extreme value theorem. The one thing I want to leave you with is notice this: that this is an if-then statement. It is not an if and only if. If f has a relative minimum or maximum at x equals c, then c is a critical number. It's not the other way around. You're not guaranteed that if C is a critical number, that it is a relative min or max. Because remember, critical numbers can include uh, points where the derivative does not exist. And where the derivative doesn't exist, it's awful thing tough to have a relative min or max. So be very careful as you're reading these. Be very careful. Make sure to ask those hard questions.